Good afternoon, everyone. Secretary Austin, it is an honor to have you here in the State of Israel. Minister of Defense Yoav Gallant and U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin recently completed a series of meetings and will now be delivering statements to the press, followed by several questions as coordinated in advance. Please, Minister Gallant. Dear Mr. Secretary, welcome. It is my pleasure and honor to host you in Israel. Your visit reflects the powerful bonds and friendship between the United States and Israel, the strategic relation between our countries, and the deep defense ties. Under your leadership, our cooperation has reached new heights. Two recent examples include the transition of the IDF to CENTCOM and the excellent joint exercise Juniper Oak. These bonds is critical to regional stability and the security of the State of Israel. This includes, above all, ensuring Israel's military superiority in the region. Today, we find ourselves at a critical point in time decisions. Iran aims to gain nuclear weapons and threaten not only Israel, but the entire world. Mr. Secretary, it is our duty to take all measures necessary to prevent Iran from gaining nuclear weapon. In this matter, our capabilities and our cooperation have great meaning and power. We dedicate a great part of our meeting today to discussing areas of defense cooperation. The Iranian nuclear threat requires us to be prepared for every course of action. I repeat and emphasize, we must be prepared for every course of action. Should Iran gain nuclear weapons and the power of nuclear deterrence, the Ayatollah regime will only increase its activities. Supporting Hezbollah and Hamas terrorism and exporting advanced weapons around the world, including UAVs and accurate missiles. We will see terrorism against innocent across the region, including the people of Iran, who suffer under a violent and op oppressive regime. Mr. Secretary, as the son of Holocaust survivors, I am fully aware of the heavy mission that rests on my shoulders, on our shoulders. We must do everything in our power to ensure that the dreams of the Ayatollahs are never fulfilled at any cost. As for the Palestinian arena, the State of Israel seeks stability and security. We are interested in the economic prosperity and the well-being of the Palestinian people in Judah, in Samaria, and in Gaza. This should never come at the expense of the life of a single citizen of Israel. And in face of terrorism, we will be determined, precise, and powerful. Secretary Austin, allow me on this occasion to express my sincere appreciation on behalf of Israel Defense Establishment for your unshakable and personal commitment to the ties between our countries and to the security of the State of Israel. I look forward to continue working closely with you. Today, we show our friends and our enemies that from the youngest soldiers to the highest leadership, Israel and the United States stand shoulder to shoulder. 
Thank you very much. Please, Mr. Secretary. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is terrific to be back in Israel. And Minister Gallant, uh, thanks for a very productive meeting. You know, we've already spoken several times by phone, but it's great to be uh, here and to be able to sit down uh, in person with you and your team. And I wanted to be here to make something very clear. America's commitment to Israel's security is ironclad, and it's going to stay that way. As Pre President Biden said on his visit to Israel last year, the connection between the Israeli people and the American people is bone deep. Israel is a major strategic partner for the United States. And that very special relationship began when President Truman became the first world leader to recognize the state of Israel, 11 minutes after it was formed. And that was some 75 years ago. And our bond is rooted in far more than just shared interest. It's rooted in the shared values of democracy and freedom and the rule of law. And those values remain essential. As President Biden has said, the genius of, democr of American democracy and Israeli democracy is that they are both built on strong institutions, on checks and balances, and on an independent judiciary. And the President also noted that building consensus for fundamental changes is really important to ensure that the people buy into them so they can be sustained. Now, for generations and across governments, the United States and Israel have worked together to strengthen our ties. You can see the depth of our commitment to Israel's security in the robust assistance that the United States provides to Israel. Our historic memorandum of understanding with Israel provides $3.3 billion annually for security assistance, as well as additional funding for cooperation on missile defense. And I'm proud that President Biden reaffirmed his support for, for the memorandum of understanding in last year's historic Jerusalem Declaration. See our commitment in the Juniper Oak exercise in January between CENTCOM and the IDF. About 6,400 U.S. troops participated in this year's Juniper Oak alongside more than 1,500 Israeli troops. And the exercise integrated U.S. and Israeli fifth, fifth, fifth generation fighter assets and included live fire exercise, uh, a live fire exercise. Size with more than 140 aircraft. It was highly ambitious and highly successful. And Jennifer Oak underscored the depth of our security partnership. It was a key step in key step forward in interoperability, helping us both to better address regional threats. And it showed our ability to swiftly flow in forces and respond to crisis, even while maintaining our commitments in other key theaters. Now, as you'd expect, and you heard uh, the minister say, much of our discussion today focused on the threats posed by Iran. Iran remains the primary driver of instability in the region. And we remain deeply concerned by Iran's support for terrorism its dangerous proxies, its nuclear advances, its aggression at sea, its cyber threats, and its proliferation of attack drones and advanced conventional weapons. Now, we continue to believe that diplomacy is the best way to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. But as, as President Biden has repeatedly made clear, the United States will not allow Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon. Now, Iran's destabilizing actions 
are not just a threat to Israel. They are a challenge to the region and to the world. We're especially concerned by Iran's growing strategic partnership with Russia, including using Iranian drones to terrorize and kill innocent civilians in Ukraine. And over the past year, Russia's military cooperation with Iran has deepened, and that poses serious challenges for this region and for the safety of your citizens. Iran is gaining important battlefield expertise and experience in Ukraine that will eventually transfer to its dangerous proxies in the Middle East. In return for Iranian support in Ukraine, Russia has been offering Iran unprecedented defense cooperation, including on missiles and air defense. And all that just reminds us of the stakes as Russia's cruel and unprovoked war of choice enters its second year. Now, Israel has been providing helpful humanitarian support for Ukraine, and I'm great, also grateful for Israel's participation in the Ukraine Defense Contact Group that I convene. Yet we're also calling on all of our allies and partners to step up now at this hinge moment in history. Nations of goodwill, and especially our fellow democracy, must all urgently do their part to help Ukraine fight for its freedom. And we must all come together to resist Putin's grim vision of a world where autocrats get to decide which countries can be snuffed out. So we'll continue to stand up for our interests, our principles, and our friends. And the minister and I discuss ways to deepen our cooperation with Israel and our other partners in the region. And we look forward to continuing to integrate Israel into the region's security architecture. You know, as a former CENTCOM commander, I am especially proud that Israel has now been rightfully shifted to the CENTCOM area of responsibility. That change in the historic Abraham Accords have opened the door to even greater regional security cooperation. That means new opportunities to share uh, early warning and to integrate air defense capabilities and to expand maritime domain awareness. And that's going to help expand security and prosperity for people across the Middle East. Now, we're meeting today at a time of tension. So we had a very frank and candid discussion among friends about the need to de-escalate, to lower tensions, and to restore calm, especially before the holidays of Passover and Ramadan. As we always have, we're calling on the Palestinian leadership to combat terrorism and to resume security. I was very clear about Israel's right to defend itself against terrorism. I extend my deepest condolences to the families of Israelis who were killed and wounded during recent terrorist attacks. And I am here as a friend who is deeply committed to the security of the state of Israel. But the United States also remains firmly opposed to any acts that could trigger more insecurity, including settlement expansion and inflammatory rhetoric. And we're especially disturbed by violence by settlers against Palestinians. So we'll continue to oppose actions that could push a two-state solution further out of reach. And we'll work to build on the February 26th agreement in Jordan including the commitment by the parties to de-escalate on the ground and to prevent further violence and to fully implement the terms of the Aqaba communique. So we had a big agenda today. We had a highly constructive discussion. And Yoav, I'm grateful for the chance to further deepen our security cooperation. Again, our commitment to Israel's security is not negotiable. And I look forward to continuing to work together to make Israel even more secure over the long haul. 
So thanks again for your friendship, and thanks to everyone for being here. And with that, I believe we'll take some questions. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We'll start with uh, Yona Bob, Jerusalem Post. How dangerous, how dangerous do you think the 84% enrichment issue was since it's so close to the 90% weaponized uh, uranium enrichment level? And how decisive should that be regarding Israeli and American policy in Iran, not just this week, but in the coming months? Thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. You know, this is uh, yet another example of Iran's dangerous uh, nuclear advances. And of course, I am deeply concerned. Uh, President Biden's preference is to explore uh, all diplomatic avenues uh, to ensure that we constrain uh, Iran's progress uh, in, this, in, this, in, the, in this field. Uh, and so we would look to continue at work to make sure that we constrain their dangerous advances. And my job as Secretary of Defense, as you know, is to provide uh, the President options if he so desires. Thanks. We'll take a question from Idris Ali, Reuters. Uh, Mr. Secretary, um, uh, the current Israeli government is the most far right it's been in its history. Um, one of its ministers called for a Palestinian Palestinian village to be wiped out, and that was during the Aqaba meetings. Um, do you feel comfortable working with and trusting a government that has individuals who have these beliefs? And secondly, um, uh, some reservists in the is, um, his position on judicial reform. Are you concerned about the readiness of the Israeli military and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran? And uh, Mr. Minister, um, Critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I uh, at the top here, let, just let me say, uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. So. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction nuclear weapons aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question, Felicia Schwartz. Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran? And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84%, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? 
Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, and we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done, and, uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I am not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it? That's it. Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. You had a great colleague, great Thank partner.
um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I, uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. So. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran. And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84 percent, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other The regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done, and uh, and we had some great discussions on on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way: while Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I am not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it? That's it. Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone.
you and a great colleague, Greg Thank Parker. You. Okay.
military and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I, uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine uh, government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran? And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84%, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done. and. Uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I'm not, I'm not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it?
That's it. Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. You had a great colleague, great Thank partner. You. Okay.
for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran? And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84%, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other the regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done. and. Uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I'm not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it? That's it. Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you.
you being a great colleague, great Thank partner. You. and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. So. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran. And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84 percent, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done, and, uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I am not going to betray my 
loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it? That's it. Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you. We got a great colleague, Greg Parker. Yeah. Okay.
country and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. So. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action, all the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States. Uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran. And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84 percent, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other Our regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done, and, uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I am not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it?
That's it. Thank, Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you. We had a great colleague, Greg Thank Parker. and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. So. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran. And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84 percent, what do you think that means um, for <coughs> the length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. 
Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done, and, uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I am not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it? That's it. Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had a great colleague, great Thank partner.
military and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran? And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84%, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other the regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done. and. Uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I'm not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it? That's it.
Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you. You got a great colleague, Greg Thank Parker.
military and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran? And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84%, what do you think that means um, for the length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done. and. Uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I am not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it?
That's it. Thank you very much, Mr. everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had a great colleague, great Thank partner. Yeah. Okay.
military and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I, uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. So. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action, all the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States. Uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran. And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84 percent, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other Our regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done, and, uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I am not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it? That's it. Thank
Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had a great colleague, Greg Thank Parker.
military and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I, uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. So. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action, all the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran. And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84 percent, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done, and, uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I am not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it?
That's it. Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had a great colleague, great Thank partner. You.
military and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran? And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84%, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other the regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done. and. Uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I'm not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much.
That's it. That's it. Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you. We got a great colleague, Greg Thank Parker.
military and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. So. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran. And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84 percent, what do you think that means um, for <coughs> the length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other Our regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done, and uh, and we had some great discussions on on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way: while Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I am not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it?
That's it. Thank you very much, Mr. everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had a great colleague, great Thank partner. Yeah. Okay.
military and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I, uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. So. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action, all the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States. Uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran. And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84 percent, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other Our regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done, and, uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I am not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it?
That's it. Thank, Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had a great colleague, Greg Thank Parker.
military and what it might mean um, for any potential action against Iran. And uh, Mr. Minister, um, critics have said that um, a number of Ukrainian lives could have been saved if Israel provided military weapons. Um, did Secretary Austin make any specific asks from you in the, those terms? And what will it take for Israel to provide military aid, even if it's defensive in nature? Uh, thanks, Idris. I, I uh, at the top here, let, just let me say uh, that uh, I defer to uh, uh, my colleague here to comment on the readiness of, of the Israeli forces. But in terms of our uh, ability to work together, uh, you've heard me say a number of times in various places that our commitment to the security of Israel is ironclad. Uh, they have been great partners throughout, and they will continue to be great partners going forward. And our commitment to the security of Israel uh, will not waver. It will not change. It is not negotiable, as I said earlier. Well, as I said before, and I mentioned, we have to be ready for every course of action. All the options are on the table. One thing has to be made clear, loud and clear. Israel will not allow Iran to possess weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, aiming Israel. As to the second uh, questions, we are doing our best efforts in coordination with the United States uh, to help the Ukraine government to protect its people. And uh, we are doing it uh, under the understanding of what are the Israeli interests in the region. We have time for one last question. Felicia Schwartz, Financial Times. Thank you. Um, Secretary Austin, are you concerned that the ongoing violence in the West Bank um, distracts from U.S. and Israel's efforts to cooperate um, on confronting Iran? And uh, Minister Gallant, um, is, is, is Israel sharing intelligence with the U.S. Um, about Iranian weapons that are being used in Ukraine? And um, on the IAEA's finding about um, enriched uranium to 84%, what do you think that means um, for the <coughs> length of the window you have to take action to stop Iran from passing the nuclear threshold? Uh, thanks, Felicia. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, I remain concerned about what we're seeing in terms of uh, uh, And we're urging everyone uh, to uh, de-escalate uh, in terms of activities in the, in the West Bank. Uh, our focus remains on working with Israel and the Palestinians and, and other regional partners to uh, de-escalate and, and restore calm. Um, our relationship with Israel remains uh, enduring and ironclad. And so, uh, again, there's work to be done. and. Uh, and we had some great discussions on, on a number of issues today. So. Thank you. As to the first question, uh, let me put it this way. While Israel is searching, looking for its enemies, we find some others. And uh, as to what is transfer in between us and our great friends in the United States, this is an issue that I have to consult with the United States before announcing it. Uh, as to the, as to the uh, second question, I think that uh, it was said loud and clear that Israel will not allow Iran to possess nuclear weapons while saying at the same time that their means is to destroy the state of Israel. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. I am not, I'm not going to betray my loyalty to this uh, chain of generation. This is our demand to stay strong and to secure the future of the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it?
That's it. Thank you very Mr. much, Secretary. everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. You got a great colleague, great Thank partner. You. Us both together to learn the dire straits that we currently are and to work together. No one party can solve this. The country wants us to work together. So when the president delays our opportunity to negotiate together to help solve this problem, it only harms our economy more. We look at the projections of growth to be very small. We see inflation continue to rise with the runaway spending. But when you look at what has transpired, the 50-year average, we're spending a higher percent of GDP than we have at any time. But the revenue that's coming in is at a higher percent than the 50-year average, the highest it's been almost at any time in America. A 20% of the GDP is coming in in revenue. We've only hit that in 2000 and 1944. So we have more money at any time coming in, but it's because we're spending so much more. So what I wanted to accomplish with this is a series of discussions that we can sit down in a professional manner the way America wants us to be, to be responsible, to be reasonable, and to stop the runaway spending, put us on a path to budget. It'll help slow inflation and also policy matters. If we can become energy independent, we can help curve inflation away. We could create more jobs and provide more revenue. We found if we put in work requirements, we could have greater productivity, which would help the supply chain, but also help on revenues coming in. But we can no longer ignore the major problem that we have, the size of our debt. And one thing we have learned through all history, every great society has collapsed after they overextended themselves. So I thank Hakeem Jeffries for being willing to do this together. I thank the um, chair and ranking member of budget that we can sit down for one of the first times and continue this discussion. Because what we have found, the runaway outlays of spending will not only harm and increase more inflation, it will put us in a weaker position in the future with China, and it will harm our children and grandchildren. And the one thing this commitment to America with a Republican majority, we promised we would change course. And today is an example of exactly what we're doing. In nine years, because we always look in a 10-year window, in nine years, if we stay exactly where we are, everything that we think government is outside of Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid, if we wipe all that away, defense, agriculture, everything you think government is, we'd still have to borrow two to three hundred billion of dollars just to move forward. So you could take everything away, and you still wouldn't get there. We are at a reflection point. This is a moment in time I think the American public is asking us, put your partisanship aside, work together to find a solution. And when I listen to Chuck Schumer saying you should just raise the debt limit and just raise it clean and don't do anything else, he's wrong. The president's position not to negotiate, that's wrong. It's not wrong from a Republican point of view, it's wrong from an American point of view. America wants us to work together. America wants us and needs us to solve this problem. And I appreciate that the Democrats agreed to do this briefing. It wasn't partisan, it was the Congressional Budget Office just giving us the numbers. I'd like to continue these talks so we can find a way and find a path to make sure 
tomorrow will be better than today. With that, let's open up for questions. Mr. Speaker, Tony yes. Ducar with Newsmax. I'd like to ask you two questions, one on the January 6th footage and the second on your speakership more broadly. First of all, one of your criticisms of the House Select Committee was that it failed to investigate why the Capitol was so ill-prepared for an attack that day. A newly released footage, uh, Mr. Carlson portrays Capitol Police as tour guides for Jacob Chansley, who was sentenced to 41 months in prison. What is your assessment of the way that those officers acted that day? And secondarily, do you believe that the sentencing for Jacob Chansley was justified or perhaps too extreme? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't in the court cases. The one thing I always make, want to make sure is this Capitol is protected and secured. I want to make sure the officers here have everything they need to provide that. Um, my whole role for January 6th is just to bring transparency. People can make their own decisions with that. I just don't think the way January 6th committee handled it by not letting Republicans on, by picking and choosing what was shown, I let people make their own decisions. And Mr. Mr. Speaker, my, yes, my yes, second go right question, ahead. After the, no, after let's, go, let's go ahead. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, given the things that have been coming out of the White House and from President Biden about what tomorrow's White House budget will look like, is there anything there that you think you can get behind? Is there any sense of common ground? Look, I, I think you could always find common ground, your willingness to do that. I have not seen his budget. I do not believe raising taxes is the answer. I've had this discussion with the president personally. If you look at the revenue that's coming into America today, it's higher than at any 50-year average. We've only topped this two other times that we've met at the same time. But our expenses are much higher. And if you look since he's been in office, the added six trillion, if you look that the 30% increase in discretionary spending just in the last four years, that has been a real challenge. And I think that's where the real problem lies. And that's why I thought today was good. Give everybody the facts and then let's sit down and find where we can find common ground. Mr. Yes, sir. You met with the president over a month ago now. It's has he, I know you said last week that he had not reached back out to schedule another meeting. Has he reached back out? And do you still think that the White House is working in honest faith here to get to a deal so that they, they can raise the debt limit? Well, no, he hasn't reached back out. Um, he told me once that he would. Uh, I believe eventually he will, but that's a month wasted. That's a month that brings more doubt financially. That's a month that hurts Americans. Uh, the sooner we get together, the better off all America will be. So I'm looking forward to him being willing to sit down and be able to move this forward. You know, Chuck Schumer says we should just pass a clean debt ceiling. He can't pass a clean debt ceiling in the Senate. So every day he wastes on this process, too. So if the president's willing, we had a good discussion that day. I believe we could find common ground. It won't be new taxes. Um, but I think we could find ways. If you grow this economy, it helps as well, too. The number one way that you can actually combat inflation is become energy independent. Lower the energy cost, it creates more jobs. It lets people keep more of what they've earned. It also, from the aspects, will help us um, not just growing the economy, but if we control our spending, it'll help also inflation. Raising taxes in a low growth economy like this will only hurt us more and put us into recession. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Yes. Speaker, can you update us on where the GOP budget plan is? Where are your proposals going to be made public and when? They will, but one of the biggest challenges we have is the disappointment of the president being so delayed in doing his budget. That harms the economy too. So here's Jody wanting to have already worked on it. The president's more than a month, a month behind. The CBO says it's going to take him time to analyze that budget once it comes out. We want to analyze his budget based upon the question you asked, too. Where can we find common ground? So we'll analyze his budget, and then we'll get to work on our budget. But unfortunately, we'll have the president being so far delayed delays us in this process as well. Can you give us a ballpark when that might be? As soon as we can get it done. But you, we don't even have the president's budget yet. Or we we would have loved to be able to do it. Can we have to analyze slides, We so have to analyze the president's budget. We don't know what it is. Once we walk through all of that, then we could take our hearings and we could start moving forward. Mr. Yes. Capitol Police Chief and the Senate Republican leader both raised concerns about the footage that you gave to Tucker Carlson, the way he, he portrayed it. He portrayed it as a mostly peaceful day. Do you have concerns with that portrayal? You know, you asked the same question yesterday, and let me walk you back through that. The Capitol Police Chief, we went to them and asked, is there any clips in, in the process of uh, where you see, tell us any warnings? He only had one, and we cleared it up. Lo and behold, Swalwell had already put that clip out on the Internet for the last year and a half. 
I'm not sure if you were asked based upon any of those about what you did with CNN. When CNN told where the leaders were taken, a secret place where they told us we couldn't even tell people. I'm when you, I know, and I'm answering your question. You can ask whatever question you want, but I have the right to answer your question. Mr. Speaker. I'm answering his question, thank you. When CNN told the American public that we were at Fort McNair, I don't know if we can go back there. I don't think that's even changed. But you have now told your network, the entire world, where we go. I didn't hear one question from your network either when you would know when subpoenas were released before anybody else. I didn't know that your network got upset when you sat in Statuary Hall, when nobody else networks got anything. And I'm not sure your network got upset either when you had the Speaker of the House daughter do a documentary filming where we are in a secure place, walking through this when people weren't supposed to know. So now you're upset that we allowed somebody else just to have transparency. So the now you are, the, the, no, the Capitol Police, Police was able to see it. And you know what the Capitol, you know what the Capitol Police told us too? Concern. Is that January 6th committee never asked them. So I thank you for your question. Mr. Speaker, yes. um, just a quick thing. Since the uh, tapes have been released, um, I understand that a number of attorneys of January 6th defendants have contacted your office to get access to this footage. Have they always had access to this footage? before you became speaker or, or, or is this a new thing? I'm not, I'm not sure completely of that answer, um, of the answer to your question, if I'll get it 100% right, because I'm not, no. I believe some has had the right to this already. I don't know if they all knew. Mm -hmm. But anyone who needs it that is a defendant, in my view, has the right to be able to see it for their defense. How many have actually contacted your office to, to get this footage? I don't know office? personally. I'd have to get back to you. Speaking of yes. Last question. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, look, looking at our commitment to America, what we told the American public, they were concerned about their security and safety. And just being able, D.C., I mean, I understand there was a protest about this at Union Station, and during the protest, someone was carjacked. I mean, we've watched what has transpired here with the Democratic policies about decriminalizing. And we've watched even the police chief of D.C. talk about that every person that they hire, that they arrest for a murder has already been arrested 11 other times. 11 other times. We've watched the president say and tell the Democrats in Congress when we proposed this bill that he was opposed to it. I think the idea of the American public being sick of what has happened with the Democrats, of defunding the police, of decriminalizing, that they don't feel safe in their streets anymore, that that was being able to turn that back around. And I'm going to be excited that we're going to have a bill signing to send to the president this Friday and you'll all be invited. But it's just also with ESG, that you're harming Americans. And we're looking here talking about fiscal responsibility. They're now picking their liberal policies instead of people being able to get a return on their retirement investments. So now they're going to have less money in the future, not just the inflation crabbing, taking away their investment eggs and their savings because of the runaway spending. Now they're going to take it away because they're going to say, you can only invest in my liberal policies, not on your return of the investment. So we will continue to run these policies. Just like we ran earlier, the idea that um, 100 Democrats can't denounce socialism I thought I was on Berkeley campus, but no, we're in the U.S. House of Representatives. So if you wonder why we have the challenges that we do, those are. But we will continue to represent the American public, their views, Republicans, Democrats, and independents, just common sense, and send that to the Senate and hope they take the action they're taking this week. To get us both together, to learn the dire straits that we currently are, and to work together, no one party can solve this. The country wants us to work together. So when the president delays our opportunity to negotiate together to help solve this problem, it only harms our economy more. We look at the projections of growth to be very small. We see inflation continue to rise with the runaway spending. But when you look at what has transpired, the 50-year average, we're spending a higher percent of GDP than we have at any time. 
but the revenue that's coming in is at a higher percent than the 50-year average, the highest it's been almost at any time in America. A 20% of the GDP is coming in in revenue. We've only hit that in 2000 and 1944. So we have more money at any time coming in, but it's because we're spending so much more. So what I wanted to accomplish with this is a series of discussions that we can sit down in a professional manner, the way America wants us to be, to be responsible, to be reasonable, and to stop the runaway spending, put us on a path to budget. It'll help slow inflation and also policy matters. If we can become energy independent, we can help curve inflation away. We could create more jobs and provide more revenue. We found if we put in work requirements, we could have greater productivity, which would help the supply chain, but also help on revenues coming in. But we can no longer ignore the major problem that we have, the size of our debt. And one thing we have learned through all history, every great society has collapsed after they overextended themselves. So I thank Hakeem Jeffries for being willing to do this together. I thank the um, chair and ranking member of budget that we can sit down for one of the first times and continue this discussion. Because what we have found, the runaway outlays of spending will not only harm and increase more inflation, it'll put us in a weaker position in the future with China, and it'll harm our children and grandchildren. And the one thing this commitment to America with a Republican majority, we promised we would change course. And today is an example of exactly what we're doing. In nine years, because we always look in a 10-year window, in nine years, if we stay exactly where we are, everything that we think government is outside of Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid, if we wipe all that away, defense, agriculture, everything you think government is, we'd still have to borrow two to three hundred billion of dollars just to move forward. So you could take everything away, and you still wouldn't get there. We are at a reflection point. This is a moment in time I think the American public is asking us. Put your partisanship aside. Work together to find a solution. And when I listen to Chuck Schumer saying you should just raise the debt limit and just raise it clean and don't do anything else, he's wrong. The president's position not to negotiate, that's wrong. It's not wrong from a Republican point of view, it's wrong from an American point of view. America wants us to work together. America wants us and needs us to solve this problem. And I appreciate that the Democrats agreed to do this briefing. It wasn't partisan, it was the Congressional Budget Office just giving us the numbers. I'd like to continue these talks so we can find a way and find a path to make sure tomorrow will be better than today. With that, let's open up for questions. Mr. Speaker, Tony yes. Ducar with Newsmax. I'd like to ask you two questions, one on the January 6th footage and the second on your speakership more broadly. First of all, one of your criticisms of the House Select Committee was that it failed to investigate why the Capitol was so ill-prepared for an attack that day. A newly released footage, uh, Mr. Carlson portrays Capitol Police as tour guides for Jacob Chansley, who was sentenced to 41 months in prison. What is your assessment of the way that those officers acted that day? And secondarily, do you believe that the sentencing for Jacob Chansley was justified or perhaps too extreme? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't in the court cases. The one thing I always make, want to make sure is this capital is protected and secured. I want to make sure the officers here have everything they need to provide that. Um, my whole role for January 6th is just to bring transparency. People can make their own decisions of that. I just don't think the way January 6th committee handled it by not letting Republicans on, by picking and choosing what was shown, I let people make their own decisions. And Mr. Mr. Speaker, Speaker, my, yes, my yes, second go right question, ahead. After yeah. the, no, after let's, go, let's go ahead. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, given the things that have been coming out of the White House and from President Biden about what tomorrow's White House budget will look like, is there anything there that you think you can get behind? Is there any s sense of common ground? Look, I, I think you can always find common ground, your willingness to do that. I have not seen his budget. I do not believe that raising taxes is the answer. I've had this discussion with the president personally. If you look at the revenue that's coming into America today, it's higher than at any 50-year average. We've only topped this two other times have we met at the same time. But our expenses are much higher. 
And if you look since he's been in office, the added six trillion. If you look at the 30 percent increase in discretionary spending just in the last four years, that has been a real challenge. And I think that's where the real problem lies. And that's why I thought today was good. Give everybody the facts, and then let's sit down and find where we can find common ground. Mr. Yes, sir. You met with the president over a month ago. Now, it's, has he? I know you said last week that he had not reached back out to schedule another meeting. Has he reached back out? And do you still think that the White House is working in honest faith here to get to a deal so that you, they can raise the debt limit? Well, no, he hasn't reached back out. Um, he told me once that he would. Uh, I believe eventually he will. But that's a month wasted. That's a month that brings more doubt financially. That's a month that hurts Americans. Uh, the sooner we get together, the better off all America will be. So I'm looking forward to him being willing to sit down and be able to move this forward. You know, Chuck Schumer says we should just pass a clean debt ceiling. He can't pass a clean debt ceiling in the Senate. So every day he wastes on this process, too. So if the president's willing, we had a good discussion that day. I believe we could find common ground. It won't be new taxes. Um, but I think we could find ways. If you grow this economy, it helps as well, too. The number one way that you can actually combat inflation is become energy independent. Lower the energy cost, it creates more jobs. It lets people keep more of what they've earned. It also, from the aspects, will help us um, not just growing the economy, but if we control our spending, it'll help also inflation. Raising taxes in a low growth economy like this will only hurt us more and put us into recession. Mr. Speaker, yes. Can you update us on where the GOP budget plan is? Where are your proposals? Will they be made public and when? They will, but one of the biggest challenges we have is the disappointment of the president being so delayed in doing his budget. That harms the economy too. So here's Jody wanting to have already worked on it. The president's more than a month month behind. The CBO says it's going to take him time to analyze that budget once it comes out. We want to analyze his budget based upon the question you asked too. Where can we find common ground? So we'll analyze his budget and then we'll get to work on our budget. But unfortunately, we'll have the president being so far delayed delays us in this process as well. As soon as we can get it done. But you, we don't even have the president's budget yet. We, we would have loved to be able to do it. We have to, analyze, we have to analyze the president's budget. We don't know what it is. Once we walk through all of that, then we can take our hearings and we can start moving forward. Mr. Yes. Capitol Police Chief and the Senate Republican leader both raised concerns about the footage that you gave to Tucker Carlson, the way he, he portrayed it. He portrayed it as a mostly peaceful day. Do you have concerns with that portrayal? You know, you asked the same question yesterday, and let me walk you back through that. The Capitol Police Chief, we went to them and asked, is there any clips in, in the process of uh, where you see, tell us any warnings? He only had one, and we cleared it up. Lo and behold, Swalwell had already put that clip out on the Internet for the last year and a half. I'm not sure if you asked based upon any of those about what you did with CNN. When CNN told where the leaders were taken. A secret place where they told us we couldn't even tell people. And when you, I know, and I'm answering your question. You can ask whatever question you want, but I have the right to answer your question. Mr. Speaker. I'm answering his question, thank you. When CNN told the American public that we were at Fort McNair, I don't know if we can go back there. I don't think that's even changed. But you have now told your network the entire world where we go. I didn't hear one question from your network either when you would know when subpoenas were released before anybody else. I didn't know that your network got upset when you sat in Statuary Hall, when nobody else networks got anything. And I'm not sure your network got upset either when you had the Speaker of the House daughter do a documentary filming where we are in a secure place walking through this when people weren't supposed to know. So now you're upset that we allowed somebody else just to have transparency. Sorry, now you are, the, the, no, the Capitol Police, police was able to see it. And you know what the Capitol, you know what the Capitol Police told us too? Concerned. Is that January 6th committee never asked them. So I thank you for your question. Mr. Speaker, yes. um, just a quick thing. Since the uh, tapes have been released, um, I understand that a number of attorneys of January 6th defendants have contacted your office to get access to this footage. Have they always had access to this footage? before you became speaker, or, or, or is this a new thing? I'm not, I'm not sure completely of that answer, um, of the answer to your question, if I'll get it 100% right, because I'm not, I believe some has had the right to this already. I don't know if they all knew. 
but anyone who needs it that is a defendant, in my view, has the right to be able to see it for their defense. How many have actually contacted your office to, to get this footage? I don't know personally. I'd have to get back to you. Speaking of the Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, you know, look, looking at our commitment to America, what we told the American public, they were concerned about their security and safety. And just being able, D.C., I mean, I understand there was a protest about this at Union Station, and during the protest, someone was carjacked. I mean, we've watched what has transpired here with the Democratic policies about decriminalizing. And we've watched even the police chief of D.C. talk about that every person that they hire, that they arrest for a murder has already been arrested 11 other times. 11 other times. We've watched the president say and tell the Democrats in Congress when we proposed this bill that he was opposed to it. I think the idea of the American public being sick of what has happened with the Democrats, of defunding the police, of decriminalizing, that they don't feel safe in their streets anymore, that that was being able to turn that back around. And I'm going to be excited that we're going to have a bill signing to send to the president this Friday, and you'll all be invited. But it's just also with ESG, that you're harming Americans. And we're looking here talking about fiscal responsibility. They're now picking their liberal policies instead of people being able to get a return on their retirement investments. So now they're going to have less money in the future, not just the inflation crabbing, taking away their investment eggs and their savings because of the runaway spending. Now they're going to take it away because they're going to say, you can only invest in my liberal policies, not on your return of the investment. So we will continue to run these policies, just like we ran earlier. The idea that um, 100 Democrats can't denounce socialism I thought I was on Berkeley campus, but no, we're in the U.S. House of Representatives. So if you wonder why we have the challenges that we do, those are. But we will continue to represent the American public, their views, Republicans, Democrats, and independents, just common sense, and send that to the Senate and hope they take the action they're taking this week. To get us both together, to learn the dire straits that we currently are, and to work together, no one party can solve this. The country wants us to work together. So when the president delays our opportunity to negotiate together to help solve this problem, it only harms our economy more. We look at the projections of growth to be very small. We see inflation continue to rise with the runaway spending. But when you look at what has transpired, the 50-year average, we're spending a higher percent of GDP than we have at any time. But the revenue that's coming in is at a higher percent than the 50-year average, the highest it's been almost at any time in America. A 20% of the GDP is coming in in revenue. We've only hit that in 2000 and 1944. So we have more money at any time coming in, but it's because we're spending so much more. So what I wanted to accomplish with this is a series of discussions that we can sit down in a professional manner the way America wants us to be, to be responsible, to be reasonable, and to stop the runaway spending, put us on a path to budget. It'll help slow inflation and also policy matters. If we can become energy independent, we can help curve inflation away. We could create more jobs and provide more revenue. We found if we put in work requirements, we could have greater productivity which would help the supply chain, but also help on revenues coming in. But we can no longer ignore the major problem that we have, the size of our debt. And one thing we have learned through all history, every great society has collapsed after they overextended themselves. So I thank Hakeem Jeffries for being willing to do this together. I thank the um, chair and ranking member of budget that we can sit down for one of the first times and continue this discussion. Because what we have found, the runaway outlays of spending will not only harm and increase more inflation, they'll put us in a weaker position in the future with China, and it'll harm our children and grandchildren. And the one thing, this commitment to America with the Republican majority, we promised we would change course. And today is an example of exactly what we're doing. 
in nine years, because we always look in a 10-year window. In nine years, if we stay exactly where we are, everything that we think government is outside of Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid, if we wipe all that away, defense, agriculture, everything you think government is, we'd still have to borrow two to three hundred billion of dollars just to move forward. So you could take everything away and you still wouldn't get there. We are at a reflection point. This is a moment in time I think the American public is asking us, put your partisanship aside, work together to find a solution. And when I listen to Chuck Schumer saying you should just raise the debt limit and just raise it clean and don't do anything else, he's wrong. The president's position not to negotiate, that's wrong. It's not wrong from a Republican point of view, it's wrong from an American point of view. America wants us to work together. America wants us and needs us to solve this problem. And I appreciate that the Democrats agreed to do this briefing. It wasn't partisan, it was a Congressional Budget Office just giving us the numbers. I'd like to continue these talks so we can find a way and find a path to make sure tomorrow will be better than today. With that, let's open up for questions. Mr. Speaker, Tony yes. Ducar with Newsmax. I'd like to ask you two questions, one on the January 6th footage and the second on your speakership more broadly. First of all, one of your criticisms of the House Select Committee was that it failed to investigate why the Capitol was so ill-prepared for an attack that day, a newly released footage uh, Mr. Carlson portrays Capitol Police as tour guides for Jacob Chansley, who was sentenced to 41 months in prison. What is your assessment of the way that those officers acted that day? And secondarily, do you believe that the sentencing for Jacob Chansley was justified or perhaps too extreme? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't in the court cases. The one thing I always make, want to make sure is this Capitol is protected and secured. I want to make sure the officers here have everything they need to provide that. Um, my whole role for January 6th is just to bring transparency. People can make their own decisions of that. I just don't think the way January 6th committee handled it by not letting Republicans on, by picking and choosing what was shown, I let people make their own decisions. And Mr. Mr. Speaker, Speaker, yes, my yes, go right question. ahead. After the, yeah. No, after let's, go, let's go ahead. Mr. Speaker, um, given the things that have been coming out of the White House and from President Biden about what tomorrow's White House budget will look like. Is there anything there that you think you can get behind? Is there any s sense of common ground? Look, I, I think you could always find common ground, your willingness to do that. I have not seen his budget. I do not believe raising taxes is the answer. I've had this discussion with the president personally. If you look at the revenue that's coming into America today, it's higher than any 50-year average. We've only topped this two other times that we've met at the same time. But our expenses are much higher. And if you look since he's been in office, the added six trillion. If you look that the 30% increase in discretionary spending just in the last four years, that has been a real challenge. And I think that's where the real problem lies. And that's why I thought today was good. Give everybody the facts and then let's sit down and find where we can find common ground. Mr. Yes, ma'am. You met with the president over a month ago now. It's has he, I know you said last week that he had not reached back out to schedule another meeting. Has he reached back out? And do you still think that the White House is working in honest faith here to get to a deal so that you, they can raise the debt limit? Well, no, he hasn't reached back out. Um, he told me once that he would. Uh, I believe eventually he will, but that's a month wasted. That's a month that brings more doubt financially. That's a month that hurts Americans. Uh, the sooner we get together, the better off all America will be. So I'm looking forward to him being willing to sit down and be able to move this forward. You know, Chuck Schumer says we should just pass a clean debt ceiling. He can't pass a clean debt ceiling in the Senate. So every day he wastes on this process, too. So if the president's willing, we had a good discussion that day. I believe we could find common ground. It won't be new taxes. Um, but I think we could find ways. If you grow this economy, it helps as well, too. The number one way that you can actually combat inflation is become energy independent. Lower the energy cost, it creates more jobs. It lets people keep more of what they've earned. It also, from the aspects, will help us um, 
not just growing the economy, but if we control our spending, it'll help also inflation. Raising taxes in a low growth economy like this will only hurt us more and put us into recession. Mr. Speaker, yes. Speaker, can you update us on where the GOP budget plan is? Where are your proposals going to be made public and when? They will, but one of the biggest challenges we have is the disappointment of the president being so delayed in doing his budget. That harms the economy, too. So here's Jody wanting to have already worked on it. The president's more than a month, month behind. The CBO says it's going to take him time to analyze that budget once it comes out. We want to analyze his budget based upon the question you asked, too. Where can we find common ground? So we'll analyze his budget, and then we'll get to work on our budget. But unfortunately, we'll have the president being so far delayed delays us in this process as well. As soon as we can get it done, but you, we don't even have the president's budget yet. We we would have loved to be able to do it. We have to analyze. We have to analyze the president's budget. We don't know what it is. Once we walk through all of that, then we can take our hearings and we can start moving forward. Mr. Yes. Capitol Police Chief and the Senate Republican Leader both raised concerns about the footage that you gave to Tucker Carlson. The way he he portrayed it, he portrayed it as a mostly peaceful day. Do you have concerns with that portrayal? You know, you asked the same question yesterday, and let me walk you back through that. The Capitol Police Chief, we went to them and asked, is there any clips in, in the process of uh, where you see, tell us any warnings? He only had one, and we cleared it up. Lo and behold, Swalwell had already put that clip out on the Internet for the last year and a half. I'm not sure if you asked based upon any of those about what you did with CNN. When CNN told where the leaders were taken, a secret place where they told us we couldn't even tell people. And when I, you, I know, and I'm answering your question. You can ask whatever question you want, but I have the right to answer your question. Mr. Speaker. I'm answering his question, thank you. When CNN told the American public that we were at Fort McNair, I don't know if we can go back there. I don't think that's even changed. But you have now told your network the entire world where we go. I didn't hear one question from your network either when you would know when subpoenas were released before anybody else. I didn't know that your network got upset when you sat in Statuary Hall, when nobody else networks got anything. And I'm not sure your network got upset either when you had the Speaker of the House daughter do a documentary filming where we are in a secure place